Welcome to worship at our Redeemer Lutheran Church in McMurray, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Ann Schmidt, and along with Pastor Steve Broom and Vicar Katie McNeil, we are so glad that you're able to join us for worship today. Our worship begins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Almighty God, we confess to you that we have failed to be the people you have created us to be. We grow fearful in stormy times and we wonder if you are still with us. We worry about the future and we can't let go of the past. We lose hope when we can't see where you are leading us. We follow paths of our own making and live according to our own laws and standards. We fail to see your image in our neighbor. We speak words that are not true and long for what is not rightfully ours. We seek to hurt others when we are hurting. When stress or anxiety overwhelm us, we turn against each other. We build ourselves up by putting others down. We turn our hearts away from you and fail to live as your people. Forgive our sins, create in us a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within us. Hear the words of promise. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant of love is sure, and God's mercy endures forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The first reading is from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall do not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, and you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burden, burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Listen for the word of the Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. 
After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you, and you are mine. That's the song that is carrying us through Lent this year, as we consider God's promises to us. On this third Sunday in Lent, we hear the invitation, Come and follow me, in the words God speaks to us through the Ten Commandments. I have reached that point in life where I cannot read a single word without my glasses. It's no longer enough for me to squint, finding a brighter light doesn't help, and my arms are not long enough for me to hold a book far enough away. But because I see distances just fine, can drive and go for walks and work in the garden without my glasses, I fool myself into thinking that I really don't need them until I try to read a recipe. Is that one teaspoon or one tablespoon of salt? Or I check my messages on my phone. I've already made the font as big as I can and I still can't read it. And forget about even trying to read the Bible with its small print. It's just a blur. And so I have a pair of glasses in the kitchen and a pair on the table by my bed and a pair that's always in my purse, so I'll be sure to have them with me when I come to work. Otherwise, I just have to turn around and go back home and get them. I know that I need my glasses. And once I put them on, what was blurred becomes clear. Everything comes into focus. I have no excuse for not wearing them all of the time. I've just convinced myself that because... I really need them for reading, for everything else I could get by without them. Pretty well. Sort of. Though recently I've begun to notice that the floor I swept without my glasses isn't as clean as I thought it was. And the stain I thought that I had gotten out of that shirt is lighter, but it's still there. I'm beginning to realize that I miss more than I think I do when I don't put my glasses on. Today's first lesson takes place during the years when the Israelites were wandering through the wilderness. God had led them out of Egypt where they'd been enslaved and God was leading them to the promised land. And along the way, God called Moses up to Mount Sinai and gave Moses the stone tablets on which were written the Ten Commandments. Interestingly, the Ten Commandments begin not with a command, but with a promise. I am the Lord your God. I've chosen to be your God. I've chosen to commit myself to you. I've chosen to be in relationship with you. It's an amazing promise. One that God doesn't have to make, but chooses to make. And with that promise comes the invitation, come now and follow me. That's what the Ten Commandments that follow the opening promise are for, to show us how to follow this God who has chosen to be our God. I think it's helpful to understand the commandments not so much as laws to be obeyed, but as the glasses we put on so we can see more clearly how to live in relationship with God. The glasses that bring into focus what it means to follow God in our daily lives. When we see the commandments that way, all those thou shalt nots aren't just prohibitions, but are words that provide clarity for the choices we make each day. Here's what I mean. The commandment about adultery brings into focus how we are to live all our relationships with spouse, with our children, with friends, with co-workers. It calls us into respecting and honoring each other, guarding and strengthening those relationships 
so that our faithfulness toward each other is a reflection of God's faithfulness toward us. Or take the commandment, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not lie. When we hold this commandment side by side with the choices we make and the words we speak, we see clearly how often we blur that line between truth and falsehood. We see how we fool ourselves into believing that there's really not a problem with fuzzy half-truths or misleading words when there actually is. The commandment you shall not murder at first glance seems like it couldn't possibly apply to any of us, but use this commandment to see how to follow God and it becomes clear that you shall not murder is about seeing the difference between that which is life-giving and that which harms. Seeing clearly the wounds that thoughtless words can inflict, the reputations gossip can destroy, the commandment brings into focus the choices we have every day to choose what is life-giving, what heals and strengthens us in our life together, what encourages each other in faithfulness in following God's ways. And so it is with all the commandments. You shall not steal, you shall have no other gods in which you trust, you shall not covet what is not yours. These commandments are given to us so that we can clearly see the way God intends life to be. And these holy words bring into focus our sinfulness, show us where we've fallen short in following God and God's ways, when we have failed to look at the choices we make, the words we speak, the actions we take through the lens of the Ten Commandments. God's word to us today as it comes to us in our first lesson comes as a promise. I am the Lord your God. And it comes with the invitation to come and follow me. And it comes with the Ten Commandments the glasses we need to see clearly how to follow our God, who has promised, do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you, and you are mine. Amen.
Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer response is sung by our worship team. Let us pray. As we turn our hearts toward prayer, come near to us, O Lord. Hear our prayers, those spoken aloud and those deep in our hearts. We pray for the nations of the world and those who govern. Raise up leaders with a longing for justice and peace. And in difficult times, guide all people in your ways of righteousness and mercy. church throughout the world. We pray for our bishops, Elizabeth and Kurt, and for all who preach and teach, and for all who serve and witness. May your love and light shine through all that we say and do in your name. Do not be afraid, I am God, we entrust to you all whom we carry in our hearts and on our minds. Bring healing to those who know affliction, hope to those in despair, and comfort to those who sorrow. Especially we pray for the family of Judy Dubich, for Edith, Dave, Chris, Dorothy, Janet, Susan, Amy, Tom, Laurie, Colleen, Anusha, Jerry, Larry, in those we name out loud and in our hearts. Lord, keep them in your tender care. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I am on your leash by wisdom before we speak, understanding as we listen, compassion towards those we meet, and uprightness in all that we do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.